Greetings Covenant Orthodox Presbyterian Church in Abilene, Texas. It's a great joy for me to take a moment to reflect on my experience of life and ministry in Abilene, Texas and in the ministries that the congregation um, oversaw during the years in which I was down there. I'm currently a pastor in uh, the community of Perkesy, Pennsylvania, just north of Philadelphia, an Orthodox Presbyterian Church here, First Presbyterian Church. Uh, I've been here now for uh, 24 years now, so uh, it's been a long term of service here. I wanted to take a moment to uh, reflect on my experience there in Abilene and uh, s reflect on some of the joys that I had in the uh fellowship of the saints there and try to be an encouragement to you as you not only reflect on the goodness of God to you over uh, 50 years of ministry but also now look ahead to what God may yet do through you by his spirit. Uh, my acquaintance with Abilene came in 1984. I was finishing up my a Master's of Divinity degree at Westminster Theological Seminary in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And uh, I was contacted by Neil Lodge, the pastor of uh, Covenant Church uh, at that time. And Neil talked to me about a summer internship offer uh, that I considered. I had a second internship offer as well from uh, Ted Georgian's church in Rochester, New York. Um, both attractive opportunities for me. Um, on balance, I uh, chose uh, to serve in Abilene, Texas, and uh, I'm thankful for uh, the effect of that choice. Um, when I arrived, we had a session composed of, I don't know, five, six, seven men. Um, you had Neil Lodge, of course, as the pastor, uh, and then on the session at the time, uh, where Frank Berger, he was a, an oil man, uh, I remember he took me out once to see one of his oil wells and uh, we were driving out in the uh, plains of West Texas and uh, in this big car and this seminary student from Philadelphia area uh, sees uh, Frank waving to everybody that drives by and I thought, well that's odd, do you know these people? I asked and he said, no, just wave to each other. It's just a friendly way of living, so I appreciated that. And Frank was very kind to me in showing me something of his business. There was Virgil Seabury, a lawyer, I believe in Sweetwater, Texas, who uh, was a wonderful man, a sweet man, but also, I'm told, a very smart, a very accomplished attorney. And uh, he had me come to preach at a uh, mainline Presbyterian Church nearby. I guess that perhaps his wife attended, or I'm not sure the connection there, but I got to preach there a couple of times during that summer as well, I believe, so that added to my experience there. Um, there was Larry Hardwick, uh, a doctor of internal medicine there in Abilene, and uh, just a very, again, an another very sweet man, uh, loved people, loved the gospel, and uh, enjoyed working with him. Uh, got to know his sons a little bit more, uh, Alan and uh, Fred in particular, who served on the session in Lubbock, Texas, which I'll mention in a moment. Uh, and then also Lane, to, uh, Lane uh, Hardwick as well. Um, so there, there was Larry Hardwick on the session, Jim Norvell, another lawyer in Abilene, Texas at the time. Um, and then there was uh, a Jim Halla, a, a, a doctor of internal medicine specializing in arthritis there in uh, Abilene. Uh, had many great experiences with Jim and his family, with Janelle, with her sons Mike and Clay, Clayton, um, and uh, enjoyed watching football games with Mike uh, playing linebacker, if I remember right, for uh, the high school team there and uh, just a lot of great experiences uh, with the Halla family. Um, they were also very kind to me in many ways, hosting me in their home and so forth. Uh, so, uh, who am I missing? Oh, Zim, 
uh, Dr. I believe his first name was Paul. I, forgive me for my uh, failure at this time in my memory, but I believe his first name was Paul Zimmerman. We called him Zim, uh, a dentist. And uh, the kind of neat thing about Zim was, uh, I, again, a uh, young guy, maybe 24 years of age, something like that, 24, 25, something like that. And I had a wisdom tooth that was giving me trouble. And so he decided he would take me to an oral surgeon to have it taken care of. And Zim would uh, pay for everything. Uh, so that was very kind of him. And I had um, heard stories of horror stories of people having their wisdom tooth pulled and all the agony involved in that. So I'm going into this uh, oral surgeon's office. I lie back in the chair and, and uh, he pokes around at the, the, the tooth uh, for a moment. And um, next thing I know, it's out, it's gone, it's done. And I was just shocked. It's like, how did that happen? It just popped right out. So uh, that was a pretty amazing experience. And uh, I enjoyed all of these men. I hope I'm not forgetting anyone that was on the session at that time. Uh, but it was a, a good session, uh, men who were concerned for the advance of the gospel and for the care of the flock there in Abilene, Texas. In the life of a congregation, there are some things that occur that uh, not everyone knows about. Uh, pastor and your elders at times have to deal with very difficult situations, and they um, try to deal with them in ways which are Christ-like, biblical, and edifying. Uh, these experiences at times show the uh, strength of character, uh, godliness, love uh, that these men have. And I wanted to highlight two experiences that I had with Neil Lodge that uh, showed to me uh, something of the uh, strength of his character uh, and uh, his commitment to uh, the Church of the Lord Jesus. I remember when I was a student there in Abilene, or a in summer intern, I um, stayed at the home of Lillian Peak, a an elderly widow at the time, and as I've been online and looked at some of the things happening at Covenant Church, I think I've seen scenes from her home uh, more recently, so uh, I guess there's some con connection there still. In any case, there was a college student who was staying there as well, and uh, uh, he and I would uh, mess around a little bit, and this one particular day we, we were having a pillow fight, and uh, I, I seemed to be getting the better of the fight, and he was not real happy with that. And uh, he, he went into his room and got out a rifle. Well, this particular individual happened to be a sniper in the army. I won't say which army or where, but anyway, um, he had to be pinned down in the, the uh, hallway uh, by the kitchen in Lillian's home. And so he was at the bedrooms at one end, I was down the other end, pinned against the wall, and he had that rifle trained on my head. Well, I certainly didn't know what was going on in his head, and so uh, uh, he, he managed to calm down at least, and I went to bed not knowing whether I would get up in the morning or not. Um, but anyway, the next morning I went to Neil and told him about what had occurred. Well, Neil went to the home, uh, went to confiscate the weapons that this individual had. And uh, I only bring up this story for this particular moment. When uh, this young man went into his bedroom to get his weapons, he closed the door behind them. And Neil Lodge said, oh, no, you don't. And he burst through that door to make sure that he didn't get a gun to use as a weapon against us. And I saw something of Neil's military background there and, again, his uh, courage in going into that. Um, so that was a pretty amazing moment for me to see. I, being a young guy, I didn't sense the danger there, but Neil sensed it. He, he went right to work right away. And uh, who knows what might have happened. But anyway, um, there was that. And then, too, there was another situation where... Um, there was concern about the preaching of one of the pastors in uh, 
a church plant that Abilene had been involved in, and there were some on the session of this particular church plant that were not happy with the uh, content of the preaching. Uh, and so uh, I remember uh, flying into this uh, nearby uh, community uh, in uh, Frank Berger's plane, and uh, members of the session and I uh, went there, and Neil Lodge uh, aggressively made the case uh, concerning the ministry of the gospel in that particular congregation. And what struck me was first uh, a very delicate and difficult uh, situation in which uh, Neil stepped into, and then his uh, dogged determination to uh, seek to uh, bring uh, clarity, focus, uh, and edification in the ministry, the pastoral ministry of that particular church. So I very much appreciated those aspects of Neil's character along the way. Um, many more experiences I could share about Neil. Um, he, of course, has recently uh, passed on and entered into his rest. I'm very grateful for him and for his ministry and uh, pray for the family that God would comfort them in their loss. Uh, Neil was a wonderful friend and we kept in touch over the years a little bit after that. Um, but So that was my stay during the summer internship and then that was the summer of 84 by the summer or so, spring, summer, somewhere around there of 1985, the session contacted me again because uh, I had returned back to the Philadelphia area. They contacted me again uh, to help them out with a church plant they had in mind for Brownwood, Texas. And uh, I agreed to do that, to come out there, and they had a, a handful of families that were organized to um, develop that church plant. And unfortunately, even before I arrived, a couple of the major families had to leave the community and when I arrived, there were just a couple of families left and not much to work with uh, in terms of a, a, a core group uh, to build on. Now, they were very fine people there, uh, but just uh, not enough really to make a go of it. I had some great experiences with the folks there. I remember um, Wesley and Patsy Eisenhower, who lived in Santa Ana, just outside the, the uh, community, if I remember the name of that community correctly. Um, the Fergusons, Cliff and Ramona, uh, and their son Wendell. Um, uh, also, um, two teachers from the uh, uh, school there in Brownwood, Texas, uh, Christine and David. Um, I'm forgetting their last name now. Um, so, so I had a number of very uh, wonderful people to meet with there. And Neil and I would go back and forth. We'd meet uh, in between. I, would, I was called uh, as an associate pastor of the Abilene congregation at that point. So I attended session meetings in Abilene. And Neil sometimes would come down to Brownwood and, and work with me. And um, so we worked together. And I was ordained in the uh, following spring of 1986 and called as a church planter, I guess, at the time there for the Brownwood Church. By the end of that year, um, I was reporting back to the session in Abilene that, in my opinion, uh, this, or, this group of people is just not enough to uh, build a church on. And uh, I, I felt, I suggested that they should uh, discontinue the work there. Um, I remember Jim Norvell commented that it was unusual to see someone uh, pretty much offer their own uh, a, a resignation, if you will, or uh, uh, choose to fire themselves or the job. But I, I just felt that there wasn't enough there and not, uh, uh, not fair to the Abilene Church to keep that work uh, going. So we closed up in, uh, in the Lord's Providence. Uh, Tim Barrow in Lubbock, Texas, decided to move on to another call, and uh, so Lubbock was in need of a, a pastor, and uh, I, I 
then moved from Brownwood, Texas up to Lubbock, Texas in, the, in January of 1987. And I was in Lubbock, Texas until um, I think it was May or June of 1991. And while I was in Lubbock, I, I had a session of my own there with, again, Alan Hardwick, Fred Hardwick, uh, another fellow uh, who was local to uh, Lubbock, Ron Kinnear. And uh, we served together for a period of time. Um, good men enjoyed their fellowship and uh, very capable men, particularly uh, Alan and Fred. Um, in any case, uh, Neil and I would meet from time to time, meeting halfway in between our uh, two cities, Lubbock and Abilene. There was a restaurant we would meet at for lunch and have a salad together, what have you, and discuss things. So we kept in good touch over that period of time. Um, it was a joy to serve in the fellowship of the Abilene congregation. Uh, I remember a number of the folks there um, and uh, times of fellowship after church and uh, going up to the uh, camp, different uh, youth camps uh, and uh, the experiences there. It was a wonderful time. And uh, I just wanted uh, to uh, remind you of a verse in Scripture that I think capsulizes, encapsulates the uh, uh, celebration that you're having at this time in uh, Abilene. It's from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7, which says, Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. It's a great encouragement to us to remember those who ministered among us. As pastors, we all have our faults and weaknesses in many different ways. The elders do as well, and everyone within the church. We all fall, fall far short of God's righteous standards and uh, the goodness of God's Word. Uh, but nonetheless, the Spirit of God is pleased to work through us, weak as we are, and uh, reveal His grace and kindness to us. Uh, it was a great privilege for me to work with Neil Lodge uh, during those years there. I understand that Lane Tipton will be with you this uh, weekend and I trust that you'll be blessed through his ministry. I'm sure that Lane could certainly add much more to fill out the the life of Neil Lodge, uh, one of your one of your fine pastors. So I want to uh, encourage you to continue in the grace of God the trust in the truths of God's Word uh, and serve the Lord faithfully uh, for the years to come. And also, do not grow weary in doing good. The church had a reputation years ago of seeking to plant new churches. It was evangelistic in nature. And God did some great things through that. Um, continue to keep uh, that, that hope of evangelizing, planting churches, witnessing to others. And may God bless the ministry of Covenant Orthodox Presbyterian Church in Abilene, Texas, and the congregation gathered there. Take care. Uh, I should say this is Richard Scott McLaren, um, pastor. I uh, think I was going by my middle name at the time, R. Scott McLaren. Um, I go by my first name now, Richard. So, God bless. Good to uh, talk with you for a little bit. I'm grateful to Grace Cruz for inviting me to uh, put this together. Uh, I, I also remember the, the Christian School and Grace and Shirley and their work in teaching at the Christian School. That was a great effort that was made at that time. I don't know what's become of the Christian School there at, at this point. But uh, the, one of the great things about Co Covenant Church was they had... Uh, a vision for a, a, a comprehensive gospel ministry uh, reaching every area of life. And that was a beautiful thing to see. So God bless, take care, and hopefully someday I'll get to visit uh, Covenant Church in Abilene again. I'd look forward to doing that. God bless, take care. Bye.